All right, so in this video, I'd like to use the half angle identities to help solve some practice problems. Uh, in this particular example, we're told that cosine of some unknown angle measure is negative three fifths. Now, to say that cosine is equal to negative three fifths, then we're saying that uh, some angle measure has an x value uh, equal to negative 0 0.6. 3 divided by 5 is 0 0.6. So uh, negative 0 0.6 would put it somewhere here or right here. Um, I know this because, well, I'm kind of familiar with the decimal equivalents of these two angles, the uh, 3 pi over 4 and 5 pi over 4. Those have x and y coordinates of, uh, well, x coordinates of negative square root 2 over 2, which is approximately 0 0.6. Seven one. So, um, if we were uh, if we were talking about an angle measure this far, um, we would have an x value of, of negative zero point seven one. We don't quite have that here. So, uh, I know that my angle measure is uh, somewhere between this uh, well forty five degree mark and this vertical. So, uh, these are the two x values in question, and we're also told that alpha, the angle measure, must exist somewhere between pi and 3 pi over 2, so that eliminates this angle, and that forces us to focus on this guy right here. So we're now talking about an angle measure that looks like this, and if nothing else, we, we have an idea of the position inside of the unit circle, so that's, that's good to know. Now, if I wanted to draw a triangle in this position, I could very easily do so, and while my scale may be off just a little bit, we do have the proper components. Um, this length is negative 3, uh, this length is 5, and I'm just using negative 3 because it's left of the origin, and positive 5 because of the absolute distance from the origin. Um, that means that this is a 3, 4, 5 triangle, and I'm going to call this negative 4 just because it's below the origin. And uh, so at this angle measure, we could have another right triangle that's created in this position. And that's going to be helpful for us because it again gives us further understanding of the position of this particular angle. As far as using the half angle identity goes, it may not be quite so helpful because if you recall, uh, with this half angle identity, we know that sine of some angle divided by 2 is simply equal to either plus or minus the square root of 1 minus cosine of that angle divided by 2. So the y coordinate doesn't really come into play here. We're only interested in the x coordinate. We already know what cosine of alpha is. That was given to us in this particular example. So let's go ahead and make a substitute or substitution. Um, plus or minus 1 minus negative 3 fifths divided by 2. Now this would be the same as 1 plus 3 fifths, so that's 5 fifths plus 3 fifths. Uh, that looks like 8 fifths to me. So we've got 8 fifths over 2, and uh, mentally I'm thinking 8 fifths divided by 2 is the same as 8 fifths times 1 half, and that's going to look like a positive or negative square root of 8 tenths, or positive and negative square root 4 fifths when reduced. So which one is it? Are we talking about the square root of four-fifths, or are we talking about the opposite of the square root of four-fifths? Now you might be tempted to accept <clears throat> this one as your answer because we know that in this position our y-coordinate is negative, but I really need to stress something here. The y-coordinate at the angle alpha is negative, but we don't really know what the y-coordinate at alpha divided by 2 is. So at half of this angle measure, what's the y-coordinate going to be? And so <clears throat> mentally you might be thinking, well, halfway around this angle might put us over here somewhere, and, and that would be a good assumption. 
uh, because let me just uh, give you one additional thought and, and we can confirm that, that assumption. If pi was less than alpha, which was less than 3 pi over 2, that was given to us in the problem, then if we come along here and divide alpha by 2, now we're talking about half of alpha, then in this inequality we can divide all of these by 2, and essentially we're saying that alpha divided by 2, alpha divided by 2 must be in between pi over 2 and 3 pi over 4. Now in a unit circle, pi over 2 is of course this position, and 3 pi over 4 is this position. Uh, so we're now talking about some angle measure in between here. The result for sine of alpha divided by 2, well that means that the angle measure lands somewhere in here. And in that position, in this position, any coordinate that lands somewhere in here must have a y value that is positive. And we would say something like this, that this y position is impossible uh, based on these restrictions. So let's try another one. Let's consider this guy up here, part b. Uh, cosine of alpha divided by 2. Well, again, using the uh, half angle identity, we know that uh, cosine of the angle divided by 2, or half of that angle, is positive or negative. Square root of 1 plus cosine of alpha divided by 2. And similarly, we can build our argument. Only this time, um, 1 plus a negative 3 fifths is 2 fifths. So that's like 5 fifths minus 3 fifths. That gives us 2 fifths. And uh, when simplified, we're talking about 2 tenths or 1 fifth. And so the question becomes, is our solution either the square root of 1 fifth or is our solution the opposite of the square root of one-fifth? Now here again, we're talking about cosine, and cosine requires an x value. Uh, we're thinking about alpha divided by two, or half of some unknown angle measure alpha. That has to exist somewhere between pi over two and three pi over four. So again, we're talking about these coordinates in this region, and the coordinates in that region do not have a positive x value. Uh, the x value that's found in that particular position is this one right here. So this, um, this x coordinate is impossible, but this one's good to go. And you might be running out of room if you printed this copy out on your own uh, sheet of paper, but uh, I'm just going to squeeze this one off to the side here. Let's talk about <clears throat> the half angle identity for tangent. And uh, that half angle identity is positive or negative square root of 1 minus cosine alpha over 1 plus cosine alpha. We can make the substitutions as we've done before. So that would be 1 minus negative 3 fifths and 1 plus negative 3 fifths. Which would simplify to positive and negative eight fifths over two fifths. Um, the fives will cancel one another in that division. And now we're looking at positive negative square root of eight divided by two, which is four, or positive or negative two. So the question becomes, are we talking about two or are we talking about negative two as a solution? What would tangent of half of our angle alpha be? Well, one more time, um, the potential solutions land in this range right here between pi over 2 and 3 pi over 4. So in this particular region, we have a negative x value and a positive y value since tangent was defined as um, y over x. If our x value is negative but our y value is positive, then that means that we're going to end up with some sort of negative number when we're done. Uh, so I would throw out 2 and I would accept negative 2 as our solution. 
So it's kind of tricky thinking about um, angles and then half of their angle or angles and, and double their angle, but uh, that's precisely what we're working through right now. It's um, an extension of our trigonometric understanding. Um, we're kind of approaching an algebraic perspective uh, with these examples. And while you might be struggling now, it's very important to continue to practice and push through and try to make your best understanding of these examples because this is uh, what we're going to be dealing with for the rest of the semester. If you have any questions, please let me know. Send me a message through Schoology or um, by email, and I can set up a Zoom meeting with you so that we can chat one-on-one -on -one if that would help. Thanks for watching.